Hello. Welcome back to the Elemental I Ching. And today we make an offering to Jinki 50, to the wood that feeds the fire, giving thanks to this sacred wood, sacred wood Palo Santo, and the blessings of the invisible that become visible as we offer our prayers into this sacred wood, illuminated by the fires of passion, illumination, in the medicine way. Welcome to uh, Hawks Hill. This is a beautiful place in Santa Cruz, California, outside Santa Cruz, outside Scotts Valley. Blessed to be surrounded by these ancient trees, these amazing beings who hold us. We're here for a Jinkies retreat, and we're, um, this weekend we're going to dive deep into the Venus sequence and discover what lies inside the transmission of the gene keys altogether. And so today I'm bringing us uh, a little bit of loving contemplation towards the gene key. Uh, it's called the cauldron or the offering, gene key 50, that moves from the shadow of corruption to the gift of equilibrium to the city of harmony. And equilibrium is a fascinating gift. It's about constantly retuning ourselves through all the initiations of life, through all the challenges, through all the data that's filtering through the computer that is our body, that is our intelligence, that is our consciousness. And this is the first uh, video that I've been late. I haven't done, I haven't, didn't get to do this during the window of Jinky 50 these last six days. And I think there was something really magical to, uh, having to face uh, a powerful initiation. A dear friend of mine passed away a few days ago when I was planning to do this video, and, and I, I had this uh, moment of peace with letting go of one offering so that I could make offerings to him and honor his passage and honor the songs that he sang and honor the light that he was on this planet. So thank you, Brother Josiah, sending so many blessings to our friends and family during this time. and giving thanks to your epic life and to the memory and legacy of healing and awakening and love and, and joy that you are still rippling throughout the planet. And it keeps bringing me back to this word offering, you know, and, and as I opened this with some Palo Santo, there's this sacred wood, this sacred wind, this gentle wind that of our intention of the invisible realm that's feeding the fires of illumination, the passionate realm, the expressive realm, you know, and so in corruption, those desires, that, that powerful desire, that flame is being fed by fear, being fed by unease. And so that passion actually spreads, uh, you know, like the, the old game telephone, when you'd whisper one word into another person's ear and they'd whisper it to the next person. And by the time that phrase got all the way around the circle, the the code had been corrupted. The, the, the words were completely different than where they started from. And it's this, this natural process of this entropy of the communication itself that it's a shadow of a shadow of a shadow of what it once was. And, and that, it, it's really important to me how, uh, how, you know, ritual can become habitual and it loses its meaning as we repeat something over and over again without feeding that passionate fire into what we're doing. I was contemplating this idea of pujas and offerings and my Dzogchen teacher beautifully broke it open for me one day when he was like, you're not making offerings to some dakini or guru or, or a deity outside of yourself. You're making offerings to awaken the senses, to awaken the intelligence of this body as that ray of divine intelligence. You know, and so when I make offerings now through, you know, incense and sacred woods and offerings of flowers and things like that, it's as if those colors and sensations and smells and, I, and, and the magic of the ritual comes alive as a theater, as a play, to awaken that energy from within me. And I feel that it's a very empowering perspective uh, to feed our intention into that flame. Another one of my wise teachers, a dear friend of mine, she taught me as we watched Grandfather Fire burning our prayers, we were throwing in prayers, and, and she thanked Grandfather Fire for taking everything, our lead and our prayers, with the same intensity and turning them all into light. 
But as I, was, as I was listening to that, it's like, yes, we can offer the depths of our lead into that calcination for the highest gold that it will become. But unconsciously, we're constantly feeding the fire of our life, the fire of life, with, some, with fear and with these hidden subconscious uh, frequencies of unease. And that's what's being illuminated. You know, so what we feed the fire, will it will show itself either through the illumination of what arises or the destructive tendencies of what that fire creates. Which is why the subtle repressed feelings of our emotional body like childhood trauma or different aspects of our conditioning, they show up in these vibrant expressive ways in our relationships, in our government and economic models and in the, the collective experience of this waking life is emerging from deep repressed energies that are finally finding ways to show themselves out in the world. So the corruption is like witnessing the the original sin of humanity, This these, these big pieces of grief, guilt, blame, shame, denial, isolation, these, these deep wounded, you know, wound up energies that are being expressed. Do we res resign our energy to it? Do we give up? into corruption you know it's easy to see a lot of the corruption now especially on america's play stage that is our our political experience just how how vibrantly awake we now are to the ridiculousness of this drama that is unfolding but it has real implications the fire has very real implications. It can burn, it can transform, it can warm us, it can, it can nourish us through food, it can protect us from the dangers, but it can also set fire to entire landscapes. So this, this area right here, you know, very close by was a very large wildfire. And it's like the, 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 poten the potency of fire is, is something to respect and understand, you know? And we're very graced the gentle wind decided to blow that fire away from our location here so that we could we could do this retreat this weekend but it it continues to bring my awareness to the to the importance that we come into right relationship with fire that we're feeding the fire of life in a good way with with the highest of following our intuition you know lightly lightness right but it illuminates these unconscious tendencies. So we need to recognize when the fire gets out of control in our life, when there is a corrupt pattern, an addictive pattern that shows up some sort of same interference loop that keeps showing up in our life, whether it's through relationships. Oh, I keep meeting this pattern in the masculine. I keep not trusting this pattern in the feminine, you know, or whether it's in our work or whether it's in our, our stress and our feeling of unease, our fear of the collective climate that's going on. So when we meet those edges of challenge, it's the universe using those initiations to constantly recalibrate us, to return to equilibrium. So be light with the energy. The true nature of who we are will never burn, will never melt. So take rapture in the layers that are being shed from this fire of passion, this destructive and illuminating influence of life's expression. And then follow the intuition, this gentle wind we've been learning and cultivating with to trust in these spirals, to move with life, you know, and begin to feed that fire very consciously to make these sacred offerings again. Not just to some outside source to save us, which is one aspect of prayer that, that's commonly used, but actually to awaken and enliven the transmission through us, to awaken the senses to all of the data that's being, uh, you know, filtered in through this cosmic organism that I am. I've been feeling the intensity of the sensations of life lately. Just a lot of data feels like it's running through my body. Do I react and respond out of fear and desire or aversion from what I'm experiencing? Or do I play with that lightness? Do I allow that fire to teach me? Do I allow that gentle wind to spiral me? You know, become in equilibrium, be in that dynamic equilibrium, that dance with life, no matter what its initiations are teaching me, to trust and the harmony, the rapture of our clarity, the diamond mind that illuminates the purity of all existence, that reveals this divine symphony that is tuning us. You know, there's, there's this 
profound gift that I, as a musician and getting to experience live improvisational music with some very gifted musicians in my life, there's this experience, we, we do a song at the beginning, a sound check, a permission song, and it's like tuning our instruments, tuning our vibration, listening to each other, working through some of the alchemical kinks of the moment until we follow, we're together, following the same spiral of intuition as it awakens, and then passionately expressing that, right? That's harmony, passionately expressing our intuition. That's, that's, that's listening to something deeper than my own ego may want to create. When the ego creates, usually out of fear, out of, out of fear that it's, being, it's losing control, so it tries to create its own harmony. It tries to, to force its expression out of desiring some sort of security in an external form, in a specific way that we think it's supposed to be. And then we myelinate that pathway, so we begin to follow that corrupt code over and over again. Or maybe that corrupt code was just in, inherited genetically or conditionally or culturally. You know, we're finding out all of these amazing codes around around things that should that now seem maybe uh, obvious, you know, consent with 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 sexual relationships, and yet there's been this cultural conditioning that let the masculine energy be able to do what it wanted to do, and that was held as okay within corporate and and media and and you know companies and things like that. It's like, oh, and now it's coming to light how important of a conversation this is. You know, we're no longer going to feed that fire with the same repeated energy. We're going to to listen to one another. We're going to trust in life in a different way than this collapsed, fear-based, desire-based, um, uh, incomplete diagram of what it is that we're creating together. The gentle wind, that loving heart, that clear mind, and the passion that emerges from that clarity. So harmony for me is less about being perfect and more about this deep listening and the rapture of what occurs when we're playing music alone and like in a small group together and we can just really dive into the, the spirals of that moment, the song that's emerging between us. None of us are creating it actively. We're all listening to something that's emerging collectively. You know, the synarchy that's, that's emerging from that space. The innovation, the innocence, the, the, the child's mind that's awakening inside that space. And so as that, as that emerges, uh, we get to be in rapture to it. We get to experience the rapture, the excitement, the passion, the love, the connection, the unified connection that emerges from that opening to what is becoming between us, to let the moment inform itself. And that's my glimpse of what harmony really feels like, what it tastes like, what it knows like. It's not about me being perfect. It's not about even being uh, in, on, on key. You know, it's actually about using wrong notes, using dissonance, using the challenges of our initiation, right? This is what equilibrium is all about, using the challenges of initiation and the dissonance of, of an incoherent reality, and yet walk with coherence through that energy so that you become a vessel for harmony, a cauldron for harmony to occur, trusting in the alchemy that's like emerging between that. The cauldron, it is holding a space for harmony to exist while knowing with clarity that the, the fires have to burn through what they need to burn through. Karma is going to do its function. Suffering is a function of the universe. There is something happening in the alchemy of that transformation. So harmony, for me, it represents this, this whole space holding the, uh, the unknown phenomena, the mystery of alchemy in our life. So following our intuition with passionate intent, right? Carving, sharpening the sword of our passionate intent so that we're not responding out of that unease, out of that fear, out of that rejection of what is, but we're also being conscious of what we're feeding that fire of life. Every time I act, every time I make one of these videos, every time I, you know, host a retreat or offer a session, like it has to, I have to learn. I'm personally aspiring to learn constantly. The sword that is sharpening itself, this passionate intent to move through me even more clearly, you know, responding from a place of intuition and lightness instead of desire and unease and fear. 
That's the work, that's the, that's the test of life. So equilibrium is constantly initiating me through life to these subtle refinements, these subtle calculated refinements to be at ease with what is and what is becoming. Even in challenging times, because this is the tipping point. Are we going to give in and resign to corruption? There's no way we can fix our political system. There's no way we can stop climate change. There's no way that we can make the masculine patriarchy understand. There's no way that, you know, what is it that we are giving up on? We're giving up on ourselves when we just give in to that. I know that it's tough. I know that there's challenge. This is, this is how life is teaching us. Whew. So I'm not giving up. I hope you're not either. Make offerings today and all days. Honoring the challenge. Honoring the initiations of life. And choosing to see directly into the heart of that fear, the heart of that darkness, and allow it to illuminate, to illuminate, to purify, to consecrate this temple of our body, this temple of our human family, and this great blessed planet that we have the opportunity to be on. Because a challenge is a reminder that I have the opportunity, the blessed opportunity to follow the Dharma, to follow my Dharma, to follow the affirmed path. Thank you to this cauldron of life that keeps teaching me to be strong and to have fun along the way. Because what else is there to do? Many blessings.